Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're going to uh, get started in our rather unusual Shabbat Zoom service. Welcome to my house. Um, we're going to start with uh, a beautiful duet uh, that I inherited from Cantor Katie. And if everyone could remain muted during the service, I'd appreciate it. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this special Thanksgiving Shabbat. We are doing this uniquely or retro, what is it, retroactively on Zoom because we had quite a lot of that over the last few years. Um, but because you are in my home and I'm so happy to be with you in your home, there are prayers that we won't be doing um, it will be a little unusual, this service, but I hope that it will be meaningful, enjoyable. Um, we're going to start with uh, the blessings over the candles, and I'm going to light my candles, which I would show you, but it's a fire hazard for me to do so. Give me one minute. And if you haven't lit your candles, please feel free to get them and to light them. Here are my candles for our candles. <laughs> oh, I'm saying the wrong. A blessing. I'm singing the Hanukkah blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotah v'tzihivanu lehad liknir lehad liknir shel shamat it's always good to get a mistake out of the way right at the beginning. It always makes me feel more comfortable, less nervous. Um, I am going to ask my daughter 
we're so lucky this Shabbat because, and this Thanksgiving, because our youngest daughter was able to join um, myself and my husband, Tom, who you just heard on the piano for Thanksgiving. And uh, Thanksgiving is such a wonderful time because we're able to gather with family and friends, but it's also a very difficult time for some people who don't have families uh, to go to or to be with. And so I encourage all of you to think about those who did not have someone or do not have someone this weekend and to reach out to them. And if you are one of those people, please know that even though the temple offices are closed, um, we are still available. And if you call the temple office, we are always here. And Heather, thank you so much for bringing your cat to our service. Um, I want to tell you that our service will probably be interrupted by one of my two dogs as well. But before it is, I'm going to ask my daughter if she will hand me uh, the glass of wine. And if you have a glass of wine, please feel free to pick it up. And we will say Kiddush together. Here we go. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Borei peri hagafen, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, V'ratzavanu, V'shabbat kodcho, V'ahava uvratzon, Inchilanu, Zikaram l'maasei v'reishit, Ki hu yom l'techila, L'mikrae kodesh, Zeher l'tziyat, Mitzrayim, kivanu b'charta, v'yotanu kidashta, mikohamim, v'shabat kochcha, v'yahava uvratzon, inchaltanu, baruch ata Adonai, mekadesh hashabat. Amen. So I thought I would talk a little bit before we get into the meat of our service about our Parsha. And our Parsha for this week is Toldot, the story of more dysfunctional family dynamics in the book of Genesis. The family in our uh, in the Torah portion this week is the family of Rebecca, Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. Rebecca and Isaac have waited 20 years before Rebecca conceives. And the portion describes how Jacob and Esau fought with one another while still inside Rebecca's womb. Rebecca is in so much pain that the Torah says she went to inquire of God. And God answered her by saying, Two nations are in your womb and two states. They will be divided from one another, starting from within you. One state shall become the mightier than the other, and the mighty one shall serve the lesser. So we have a childless couple who are suddenly parents of twins who, their mother is told by God, will continue to be at odds with one another for the foreseeable future until one of them wins the battle for dominance. Add in the fact there, there is only one birthright, a special blessing, to be given by Isaac to only one of his children, and you have trauma worthy of a telenovela series. And let's not forget the rather bizarre and traumatizing childhoods that Isaac and Rebecca have. Isaac's father ties him up and tries to sacrifice him to God before an angel appears to stop him. And Rebecca, who is sent from her home with a stranger to marry a man who she has never met when she is very young. Most biblical scholars put her age somewhere between 10 and 14 years old. Clearly, these are not people who have experienced a modeling of superlative parenting themselves. Esau enters the world a few seconds before Jacob, who the Torah says is gripping one of Esau's heels. From the beginning, it's clear that Isaac and Rebecca each have a favorite child. Isaac adores the rough and tumble Esau, and Rebecca coddles the sensitive domestic Jacob. Now, according to the covenant and the laws of the land at the time, only the eldest could receive the special blessing. 
So first we watch as Jacob barters a starving Esau for the blessing, food for birthright. And then as Rebecca encourages Jacob to deceive Isaac, old, thick, and blind, so that Jacob will receive the blessing. Over the centuries, the rabbis have tried really hard to rationalize the actions of Rebecca and of Jacob, but it's tough to put the two of them in a good light. light. These are flawed people. This story seems almost perfect for this Shabbat on Thanksgiving weekend. Not every Thanksgiving turns out to be of the Norman Rockwell variation. We hold on to the myth that there are perfect families out there, one who never suffer from disagreements and discord, but the truth is we are all human beings with all our flaws and even the most loving of families or the most revered ones experience their troubles. But here's a spoiler. Even though this portion ends with Esau vowing to kill Jacob and Jacob being trundled over to his mother's family, later on in the Torah, once their parents have died, Jacob and Esau do reconcile. So, as for many things in this world, we look to the future generation to make peace, to make things right. And hopefully in future, there will be many more uh, family reunions, wonderful family unit reunions and wonderful blessings for all of us. Now we are going to turn to the Shema. We're gonna move right through the introductory prayers that aren't said in a small um, uh, service away from the temple. And we are going to say the Shema. So I hope you'll join me with Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed And if I can find it, I will also chant the Ve'ahavta. Via hafta ei tadonai elohecha, bechol abavcha, uvachol nafshecha, uvachol meodecha, behayu, in adivarim ha ele, asher anochi mitzavecha, hayom alivavecha, vishinantan livanecha, vidi bam. Bishiv techa bebe techa, uvlech techa va derech, uvshach becha, uv kumecha, uksar tam le od, alya decha, behayu le totafod, bene necha, uchtav tam, amizuzot be techa, uvisharecha, leman tiskeru. Vasitem et komitz votai, hitem kiroshim, lelo hechem. Ani, Adonai lo hechem, asher hot seiti erchem, me eretz mitraim, lehiot lachem, lelohim. Ani, Adonai lo hechem. And now we're going to move in to the healing portion of our service. There are a number of people who we know are in a lot of pain and suffering, um, whether it is a physical ailment or it is um, from grief or other anxieties or sadness, and we remember them. I'm gonna ask my husband, Tom, if he will accompany me as we sing the Misha Beirach together. Misha Beirach Avotei Habracha May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage 
to make our lives a blessing and let us say amen and if there are people that you are thinking about who need a Misha Berach blessing, if you will put them into the chat so that we can all see their names. But tonight we're thinking of Pat Adamson, Aiden Ashley, Raymond Douglas Alcorn, Dr. Martin Bialo, Evan Bin, Rosemary Buchwalter, Frankie Clement, Ann Cole, Richard Corwin, Mark Edelstein, Mickey Edelstein, Benjamin Edelstein and Brian Edelstein, Daniel Heyman Feist, Eric Fisk, Z Fisk, Philip Gelman, Bob Gold, Carolyn Gold, Jennifer Guse, Barbara Green, Buddy Green, Marvin Hollander, Stuart J, Robert Jaffe, Lori Cattleman, Doris Kirshner, Wendy Sugarman Krosnoff, Hank Corin, Dr. Sonia Levy, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Sonia Linky, Levy Lobel, Michael Lynch, Dolores Munsick, Ruth Polor, Gloria Rodesky, Lee Siegel, Stacy Siegel, Dr. Cindy Steinman, Pete Tanner, and Fred Truex. <laughs> Bless those in need of healing with Rifu Shlema, the renewal of body the renewal of spirit and let us say amen and now we'll take a moment for our own silent prayers to think about the people in your life who need blessings and to give thanks to god for all the blessings that you have received. Now, we turn to those to remember those who we have lost. Give me one second. I'm going to ask my daughter, can you find the Kaddish for me? Yeah. In the meantime, we're going to turn to remember those who we have lost um, just in this past week. We note the passing of Eric Adler, um, a, a temple member, and we send our good thoughts out to his wife, Gloria, his son, Josh, and his grandchildren, Stella, Maggie, and Cooper. We also remember Don Rolander, who was the temple's organist for over 40 years. We remember those who have passed away during this past year, Joan Keller, Leo Weintraub, Nina Steg, Janet White, Phyllis Kraus, Phyllis Allman, Sheila Buchwalter, Robert Mansfield, Albert Gart, Barry Dabowski, Anne Blumenkrantz, Shirley Matler, 
Richard Clausen, Mary John Resch, Liesel Schick, Jay Roth, Fran Brickman, John Conway, Michael Vareb, Janice Lenderer, and Bernice Lipman. We also remember the yard sites of Francis Alexander, Gertrude Azarva, Sheldon Backrock, Estelle Biard, Leatrice Schultz Bronson, David Clausen, Leon Eichel, Veta Felmus, Marianne Goldman, Maxine Gumperts, Harry Horowitz, Lori Kelly, Philip Kunkis, William C. Lakoff, Louis Letterer, Lillian Lewis, Molly Linden, Rena Fuchs Mansfield, James E. Messick Sr., Jenny Myers, Nat J. Polin, Ruth C. Pollock, Jean Potoker, Beatrice Pryor, Alfred, Alfred J. Quintner, Leonard Rauch, Etta Rifkin, Billy Berman, Billy Berman Rutenberg, Edna Safier, Benjamin F. Schwartz, Hazel Schwartz, Michael Shallett, Shirley Schumann, Sylvia C. Silverman, Ben Smilek, Stanley I. Sorokas, Israel Waldman, Fanny Warshaw, Sarah Weiner, Sylvia Werner, Anna Witness, Anna Wittes, Alex Witt. Are there those of you, if there anyone here who is observing a York, your site, I invite you to unmute yourself now and to let us know who you are remembering this evening. All right, then if you will, in one moment, we will find the Kaddish. We will all say it together. Yit gadal, yit gadash, shemay rabba, the alma divrah yurte, the amlich mafute, the chayachon of Yomachon, of Chaye de Kobetris Rael, the agala of Isman Kari, the Imru Amen. Yehe shme rabba, mevarach, the alum, will me almaya. Yit barach, viyit tabach, viyit pa'ar, viyit romam, viyit nase, viyit hadar, viyit ale, viyit halal, shmeid gudsha brichu, le'elam in kol birchata v'shirata, tush birchata v'nechamata, dam iran v'alma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba, min shmaya, Bechayim aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael ve'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mroma, hu ya'ase shalom aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael ve'imru amen. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at the season in past years, and those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. Zichrona livracha, may their memories be a blessing. Before we end our service, I want to add one of, ask one of our temple co-presidents, Sandy Sunter, if she would like to say a few words and um, share our temple announcements. Shalom. You know, I am just so happy to do that. I see faces that I haven't seen for such a long time. And some that I know, like Hank, Kai, and Alice, and Shelley, and Barbara. So glad to see you and Winter. I do get to see you, some of you in person. And Barbara, I'm so happy to see you and Heather, both Heathers. And and thank you, Beth. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. <laughs> I miss seeing you. Thank you. Um, let's see, what can I tell you? Um, I think the big thing that's coming up really is, it, you know, when you look at your um, e-blast, we have a couple things. First, we have our November 30th. It's a Wednesday at 6 o'clock for our WTVI dinner get-together. 
You don't have to be a member of Sisterhood to join. Just come and enjoy the meal. We're having it at the Acropole Family Restaurant on Starkey Road. And um, we usually have a really good time just kibitzing and eating, things we do the best. And if you would please, if you'd RSVP to Andrea Feldman, um, and you can find her um, email uh, on our e-blast. On December the 4th, we're, that's a Sunday, we're going to have a shop and schmooze for Hanukkah. It's going to be a holiday shopping event. There's going to have some vendors, donuts and coffee. And then there'll be things, of course, like we do every year where the children can buy things for their moms, dads, brothers, sisters, friends, whatever. But there also will be opportunity for adults to buy some more of the adult type gifts, not, not the type of gifts, but you'll, for grownups. And then the big thing, December the 17th, Saturday, is the Night of the Mentalist. That is going to be, we're calling it the Magical Feast of the Senses. And this is in, in lieu of our casino night. And if you got to see your e-blast, there were pictures of the gentleman that is going to be reading our minds and kind of a little worried about that. Um, his name is Brett Berry. Um, he is, this is what he does for a living. Um, and we appreciate, we're get, some of our sponsors are helping bring this to us. And that's Audrey and Sean Hollander, Sheila and Ron Miller, Sherry Teddy and Greg Bachman, and Leslie and Lenny Mankin. We want you to come to experience this, but we also are looking for sponsors. We're looking for um, items for our uh, silent auction and our in-person auction as well. And of course, we will be going back to Rabbi has his um, introduction to Judaism class on Tuesdays and followed by his Bible study at 730. So we still, there's still a group of us that get together. So we invite everyone to come on those Tuesday, uh, on those Tuesday nights. I just wanted to share a little something from, about because it was Thanksgiving and um, it was one of these, just what kind of Beth was talking about, one of those weekends, you know, where there's a lot of mixed feelings and lots of different kinds of experience, especially in my world, I have lots of different families. So it was it was lovely, I was with, with family and some friends. And I just wanted to read, this is, um, this is a prayer by Rabbi David Wolpe. Grateful for our gifts and grateful for our past. We cherish our spiritual inheritances, the pilgrims who journeyed, the Maccabees who fought, the generations who struggled and sacrificed to preserve their memory. As Americans and Jews, dear God, we are doubly blessed. Given so long a legacy to celebrate in so sublime a land. So we light a candle, set the table, say our prayers, and declare the miracles of our tradition, our freedom, and our future. We rededicate ourselves to live so that we might be worthy of the greatness bequeathed to us and merit the joy of handing it on to our generations. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And Hank, I don't know if I said hi to you too. Hi, Hank. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. That was really wonderful. What a perfect way to end the evening. Um, we're gonna say the motzi, and then if you haven't already had your Shabbat meal, um, uh, I hope you have a wonderful one. And if you've had one, I hope you have something sweet and fabulous uh, to really get the Shabbat off with a, a sweetness uh, that it deserves. Motzi lechem min haaretz. We give thanks to God for bread. Thank you, God. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lecha min haaret, b'te avon. Shabbat shalom, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Shabbat and a wonderful week. Shalom, everyone.